Hi, it's great to be here. I'm Dr. Adam Rodnick, practicing chiropractic out of Commerce Township, Michigan. And this is Ask the Chiropractor. We're here with our guest today, Dr. Andy Roberts out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. And I'd like to talk with you today, Doc, about the science of chiropractic. One thing I've uh, been experiencing, I've noticed in the past, that people in the, out, in the public will say that, oh, I don't believe in chiropractic, or that, oh, I'm a believer, I believe in chiropractic. What I want to talk about with you for a few minutes is that regardless of whether someone believes in this or not, we're dealing with science here, we're dealing with neurology here, and we're dealing with scientific facts. Whether someone believes it or not, what we're doing accomplishes its mission, its goal. Definitely. And, uh as always, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for having me back. And it's interesting when you were talking about uh, one person saying I believe in it or another person saying I don't believe in it. Both statements are actually incorrect because it has nothing to do with belief. When somebody tells me that, I always love to tell a story. Is like, uh, you know, if I have a person that doesn't believe in the law of gravity and I take that person up to the second floor of my clinic and I say, okay, you don't believe in the law of gravity, so take a step out in, off of the edge of the building and see what happens. But we know the law always wins. When something's a law uh, proven, then we know, we could say that it doesn't, it's regardless of whether you say you believe in it or not, it is a fact. Chiropractic falls into that realm at this point. The science has shown the neurology behind what's happening when those preciously soft and delicate nerve tissues uh, are being interfered with and that affects the rest of the body. So now we're in the realm of science, so it's going to be an exciting uh, topic today. Yeah, like, for example, uh, just like you said, when somebody falls off the building, they're falling off that building. It doesn't matter. It's a universal law. These are laws of physics. These are laws of the universe. Uh, Christopher Reeves, everybody knows what happened with Christopher Reeves. He fell off a horse, damaged the brainstem area. Part of the bone actually broke off. They called it a Jefferson's fracture. And regardless of whether or not he believed in this or not, we know what happened to him. His organs shut down, he was paralyzed, and a few years later he actually passed away. Correct, correct. I mean that actually, that area that he damaged is the area that I specialize in in my clinic. It's called upper cervical specific chiropractic. And to give a, a, a quick uh, lesson in that, this is a, a model, obviously a large model. This would be a human-sized model. This is the back of the, of the skull, would be here. The top two bones of your neck then articulate or join up with this part of the bottom of the skull. This is it in a larger form. Again, here is the bottom of the skull. The brain sits in here. And then through this hole that we have here, that's where the brain shoots down the brain stem and into the spinal cord and it supplies the rest of the body. Uh, as you were talking about, uh, Dr. Adnick, the first bone is called the atlas. That was the bone that, uh, that Christopher Reeves broke in that injury. And it's interesting because the Jefferson's fracture is not a fracture where it comes together and actually damages the brain stem or the spinal cord itself. A Jefferson's fracture is also called a burst fracture. So that bone, which looks like this, like a donut, actually burst apart. Which is interesting enough because then you would think, well, okay, that doesn't produce any pressure or hurt the spinal cord or the brain stem. But what happens is the inflammation caused by that damage closes like a tourniquet around that brain stem and we saw what happened to Christopher Reeves. All, if not all, of the information, the messages from the brain to the body and back were interfered with and that put him basically in a quadriplegic state. He wasn't able to have any motor coordination, he wasn't able to move, a lot of his life functions were, were, were depressed, he wasn't able to do things on his own that normally we take for granted like digesting food, eating food, uh, passing solids, all of those kind of things that we take for breathing, that we take for granted, were interfered with. And like you said, regardless of whether he believed he was damaged or not, the fact is that that nervous system, that vital lifeline from his brain to his body, had a tourniquet around it, and that created his physiology, which was all of that stuff that we saw. Particularly, as you said, that brainstem area is of utmost importance. That's all life force, all neural impulses come right from the brain through that area, making that such a vital part of our anatomy that is basically the gateway from brain to body. And we've been seeing, and we talked about on a couple of the previous episodes, other studies showing chiropractic affecting blood pressure and chiropractic affecting the blind and on all sorts of different amazing testimonials and, and studies that are coming out. And what we see with that brainstem area controlling different blood pressure centers, different organ centers, we see that 
if there's interference there, many organs aren't working properly. Much of the body isn't able to function or communicate properly. Our body goes into, uh, when something is interfered with the medullary lock, our body goes into sympathetic dominance. And uh, what that is means our blood pressure is, is higher. Our pupils are dilated. Blood is pulled away from the digestive and reproductive system and pushed into the muscles to get our body ready to, to fight, to get our body, uh, our stress levels increase. And that's constantly happening anytime there's irritation on uh, that, that medulla area. Yeah, we call that area, that upper cervical area, which is right here in the neck, which is the same area we're talking about right here. We call that Houston control. And Houston control, like NASA. I don't know if you, if you all remember when you see pictures in either in movies or in real life when they're doing a shuttle launch. There's this massive control center. They have hundreds and hundreds of monitors. They have hundreds and hundreds of computers. They have millions of cables communicating at each point between the shuttle and them and every intricate detail needed to get uh, to a successful launch and subsequent flight. That completely complex, which none of us could even comprehend the amount of wires and crosstalk that goes on between those computers, even that pales in comparison to the brain and brainstem in each one of, of your listeners and us. You know, you're talking about a brainstem which is no larger than your pinky, and through that little pinky, that size, passes over 70 billion nerve fibers. It's mind-boggling to even comprehend that that can be. It's an amazing system, and, and even modern science can't even comprehend and fathom how in-depth this is, where nobody in modern science, nobody's ever going to be able to take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and turn it into live, breathing tissue. Well, that was our birthright. That, that <laughs> was given from above. We have this ability. It's the most wonderful, precious gift that we are continually regenerating, continually growing. Um, some of us in yeah. places where we don't Some want it to grow, but on a, more, more of a sense on a healing growth level and repair if we're moving in the right direction. But most of us are moving in the wrong direction. Instead of growth and repair, we're heading towards sickness and disease and breakdown. There's a breakdown, correct. So we have a, a, a very uh, wonderful video clip that I'd like to share with the, the studio audience. A, a wonderful study that came out that shows basically a cerebral spinal fluid pump and some of the impulse and the signals through the nervous system on an MRI before and after an adjustment. This is really exciting. It is, it is. So let's roll that clip and we'll talk about it in just a minute. Notice, notice the size of the foramen magnum. Notice the ventricular action. Notice the disc herniations. And notice the cord descending down here over C5, C6. Notice the bulges here and the fluid trying to descend down. This is a stenosis occurring here. And you'll notice that it's much less bright white than the post. When you look at the post in a second, you'll be able to see that it'll be much brighter and much more descending down. And you could see here the uh, focusing of the ventricles. It's almost like a, a milking type effect. And you notice the change in signal. Now one of the most amazing things about our research was that even prior to getting to the stage of the flow studies, we were able to uh, show changes of uh, signal intensity. And the increased white that you see is a change in signal intensity. Remember, the, nothing's changed here except the patient being adjusted, therefore changing the signal intensity interpreted by the MRI magnet. Now this is the same patient on the post adjustment. Look how much brighter it gets. It bounds at you. One surges. Two. If you look down the cord, it's surging down the cord. Her CSF was going barely. Obviously, she was alive. But now she's alive. <laughs> More importantly, you're seeing here uh, uh, cerebral cortex activity where before it was stagnant. And when you have this image, isn't this the image we get and feel after we get a good adjustment? We notice those changes. We feel 
almost as if this picture is telling us how we feel after we get adjusted. Notice the pulsation, the size of this foramen magnum has opened up tremendously. The disc herniations. And you can see the pulsation descending down here to C6 and C5 area where it wasn't before. How about that? Wow, that was really exciting. You can visibly see the difference in pulsations there, right at the foramen magnum, right where the, the base of the skull is. You can see the pulsations of the fluid. You can see that the canal is open. Right. To let people give them a little idea, the, the brain is sitting in the skull. Uh, the brain stem and spinal cord exit the skull, go down through the spinal cord as, column, as you have here, and then the nerves come out of the, the spinal column. Now, that brain, brain stem, and uh, spinal cord have a, have a bag around it, a sheath. It's called a meninges. Um, we hear about it only when something goes wrong, like with meningitis, a horrible infection of that tissue. But it's basically a bag, a protective bag that surrounds these delicate nerve tissues. In that is what's called, what you were saying, cerebral spinal fluid. It's like a bath. It's a protective device to cushion the brain and the, the brain stem and spinal cord and also to bring it nutrients. So there's a constant flow. The brain inside the brain, there's a center, in the center of the brain, there are ventricles that continually produce cerebral spinal fluid as the old one's being used up and, and removed. And there's a flow, a flow from the brain down through the spinal cord and up. It's vital that this cerebral spinal fluid, or S, a C, a CSF as we call it, flows in this way because that is the only way nutrients get to those, these vital nerve tissues, the, the brain, the brain, the brain stem. And the, uh, and the rest of the spinal cord. So any hindrance to this, any stop of the flow, ceases or hinders the flow of the nutrients to it, and that begins to affect then the performance of these tissues. And you're talking about every single life function, from moving your little finger to actually the beating of your heart and everything in between. So this video that we just saw is so amazing to show the impact of a chiropractic adjustment, the removal of that nerve interference that also opens up that flow of cerebral spinal fluid. And the power of the adjustment is so amazing, but what's a scariest thing is that when the cerebral spinal fluid isn't pumping, when the nerve system isn't functioning properly, many times there's no symptom, there's no warning sign. Many times somebody could be functioning at 85% of their normal capacity and they have no idea. They have no way of knowing that themselves, they can't feel it, they can't even consider it. Well, that's why they call it, you know, within, the, within our field, they call it the silent killer, because it truly is a silent killer. They occur with little fanfare, little actual sensation. I, I wish, I wish we had a, a red light on top of our head, and every time we got a verbal subluxation or that interference and pressure to the brain stem, that a light would go off and say, boop, 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 adjust me, fix me. But unfortunately, we weren't designed that way. And those bones can misplace, can put pressure on that brain stem and interfere. From that moment on, your body is not doing what it needs to be doing. Have it long enough and then you start to create those chronic diseases that we're all living with today. I mean, I mean just go through the top three killers in, in, in the United States and we see that. And yet we're the richest, we have the best medical system, we have the best drugs, and yet we're getting sicker and sicker. So there, there is a problem. And Part of the problem is this silent kill, killer, the vertebral subluxation. We say that you need to get checked, regardless of how you feel, you need to get checked, evaluated. It's the same thing for a dentist. If you're feeling okay, it doesn't mean you don't go back to the dentist. You don't, I'll go back when, I have, when I'm in terrible pain. What, what sense does that make? So now, by the time you're in pain, now the bacteria have eaten through your bone, uh, through your tooth, have infected the nerve. Now maybe you have an abscess because you waited so long. So now instead of a simple fix, now they have to pull the tooth and put a whole implant in there. It makes no sense. And most people understand that. I need to go regularly to my dentist. I need to go every six months. I need to go every year. I need to go every four months. Every person's different, but I need to go regularly. Why is the nervous system, which is so much more important than, than a tooth, why do people not understand, I need to get this checked regularly? And we hear, and I'm sure you hear this yourself too, but we hear it all the time, meeting people in the public on the street, and they, they'll say, well, I don't need a chiropractor. Well, our response is that, how do you know? How do you know if you need a chiropractor or not? The only way to know is to get the nervous system evaluated, get the nervous system checked. And what we try to do is empower the, 
empower the people, empower the patient, empower them to know that their body is intelligent, their body is smart, their body has an ability to heal. All we're doing is helping to facilitate that by removing interference. I have a story I actually just heard uh, last week and I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Before uh, the Europeans settled this continent, it, when uh, a couple hundred years ago, there was wolves running rampant out. There was wolves all over the continent. And the um, thing about wolves is wolves run in packs. Wolves hunt. They're fierce. They protect each other. And along came man. Along came the settlers. And they left a piece of meat out in front of the wolves. Wolves ran up, darted, grabbed the meat before the man could return, and ran off as fast as they could while the man just stood watching. Next time, the man dropped the same different piece of meat, and the uh, wolf ran up, grabbed the meat. The man was standing just a little bit closer, and the wolf darted off. Next time, he dropped the piece of meat, was standing a little closer, and the wolf kind of walked up and just grabbed the piece of meat and trotted off. Next time, he set the piece of meat down, the wolf came and got it. Boom, got a noose around his neck. And then the wolf, eventually, well, he became a dog. And there's nothing wrong with a dog, but it's not a wolf. And the wolf doesn't get tugged and pulled around by the leash. And that's what we're seeing more and more with the, with the public, with people with health care. Rather than being empowered themselves, that their body has an ability to heal, that they should exercise, that they should eat well, it's, well, there's a commercial that says, ask your doctor about this. And they're just tugging the leash. Ask your doctor about this one. Paxil, Zoloft, different things. And, and people are just being pulled around, being tugged around, and aren't in control of their own body, aren't in control of their own health. They're pulling, being pulled around by public media. Yeah, I think that's a great a analogy. I think that a lot of people don't want responsibility for their own health because this way, if they do get bad, they can just blame it on, on someone else. Um, I think it's important when someone says, you know, oh, I don't need chiropractic, that's only because they're, they're mis misinformed, uh, miseducated. They're only saying that because they have been taught that symptom-free means I have no problems, so I don't need anything. The same would be true as if I was to ask you, you know, if you're listening on this, how many of you are taking a medication for high blood pressure? I'm sure a lot of you have raised your hands. And if I was to ask you how you're feeling, all of you would say you're fine. And in fact, if someone asked you, you know, how's your blood pressure problem, you would probably say it's fixed. I don't have a blood pressure problem. But understand, if you're taking a medication to artificially lower your blood pressure, you are not fine. The problem that created the high blood pressure in the first place still exists, and now you're throwing a poison into your body to artificially lower it, and that hinders every other part of your body as well. You are not well. Even though you might feel well, the question is, will you add years to your life and life to your years? And that really is what we try to do, and when you talk about empowering people, is to educate them to the point of, Symptoms are a very poor indicator of whether you're healthy or not. Everyone has the story of the 30, 35-year-old guy, girl, who is not as sick a day in their life, goes out and plays a round of golf on hole number 16, kills over and drops dead of a heart attack. Oh my gosh, he was never a day in sick in his life. It's obviously, once you stop and think about it and not get caught up in the fervor, is that, that an hour before he had the heart attack or she had the heart attack, yes, he was sick. A week before he was sick, a month before he was sick, and probably 10 years ago he was sick, he was growing this problem. Breast cancer. By the time that they detect a lump in the breast, Six to nine years have already passed from the beginning stages of a cancerous cell to that. So don't tell me that automatically when we do the mammography, oh man, thank goodness we discovered Perfect. it because now we got it. Nine years ago this cancer was started. So what's the, what's the answer? Get your nervous system, your inner healer on the job first so these problems don't, don't arise, that you have the best chance that if they do arise to fight it and you're at your optimal level of health. And our body, like we've been talking about, is smart, is intelligent, and the body has its own checks and balances. So like you're saying with the blood pressure, you take some medication to artificially lower it. Your body raised that for a reason. For example, you possibly have thick or viscous blood running through the veins because of the terrible food you've been eating. So to pump that blood through the veins, your body has to increase that pressure to move it through to get proper oxygenation. Well, functioning kidneys, same thing, exactly. And so our bodies are intelligent, and what we're doing many of the times in this country right now is going against the body's natural intentions, the body's healing ability, 
and uh, kind of choking it off. And it's killing us. It's killing us as a society. Do you know that you know for uh, uh, infant mortality rate, we rank, we really should rank number one as, in, as, the, as the lowest. We're not even close. We're not even close. Overall health, we're like 47 out of 50 industrialized countries. How could that possibly we be? Ranked, we ranked dead last out of that study on industrial countries in infant mortality rate. Correct. In infant mortality rate, where we're such a modernized, technologically advanced system. We have everything. We've got the money, we've got the hospitals, we've got the doctors. We have everything. Another one in, this, in a study that we came in dead last is that they had a statistic called years of potential life lost. So if our potential life, which the Harvard Longevity studies now show, top medical science research now shows, our potential life is 120 years. We should live to 120 years of good health. So this debt is years of our potential life lost. We came in last. Right now, living in the United States, we've managed to stop nature's intentions better than any other country in the industrial world. I, I love that. I, I'm just smiling because when you said 120, you know, in the Bible, after the flood, that's what God said, the life of man should be 120. 120 years. And now science proves that out. Whenever I hear people, whenever I speak with people, they always say, oh, well, what, you what are you talking about? Health here in the country is great. The people are living longer. But here's the thing. You had people maybe years, years back, life expectancy was 65, and now they're living to 77. All that means now is they have an extra 12 years of living in misery. They're on anywhere from three to 15 different medications. Most of them are uh, unable to care for themselves. Most of them are on some kind of support. Uh, most of them have problems with memory and uh, cognition. So years might be adding, but they're horrible years. They're not quality of life years. And in fact, that number is now beginning to reverse. Our life expectancy here in the United States is going down, which proves out that cycle of where our health status proves that. What we have set up here as a health system, quote unquote, is not working. It's failing. We need another paradigm. We need another solution. Chiropractic has that to offer. We're able to empower our patients to make the proper choices and decisions for their health care, to move correctly, to think correctly, and to eat correctly, all through the integration of the nervous system to bring them to their full 100% potential. That will get them to the full expense of, expanse of their years, fully vital, just like the developer of chiropractic, B.J. Palmer, said, life should be like a candle that burns brightly to the bitter end, flickers once or twice, and goes out, instead of what we see today, which burns halfway and then fizzles and for half out. of the right. rest. And I want to make it very clear to our, our video audience here that um, these statistics that show how unhealthy and how terrible right now our health is in the United States has nothing to do with some of the actions or the intentions of doctors or nurses. These people on a personal level, they want to serve. They want to save lives. They want to help people. They're doing the best they can. They are doing that. But the way that our whole system is right now, the way that pharmaceutica in general is, is kind of running the show in this country, how it's on every other commercial is really the detriment to the health. That, and that, that's what models our thought. You know, you have a child that's watching, you know, six, eight hours of TV a day what do they get bombarded with? If they're watching children's um, TV, so they're getting bombarded with, you know, tricks, tricks are for kids, uh, Fruit Loops, all of this stuff, which are complete poisons. So you have food colorings, you have sugars, you have high fructose corn syrup, you have hydrogenated oils that we're pumping into our kids. So the kids have to have health problems not soon after. So what's the next step? Well, the mother and the father have been watching TV also, and it gets into the groove. Well, I'm on this medication, so let's get you on some medication. And it just starts you down this road. One begets two, begets five, begets ten. And it's like this, too. Everything you see on TV is carcinogenic or cancer-causing agents. You see Fruit Loops, Tricks, all the foods, all the drinks that we see on TV have carcinogenic items, carcinogenic products in them. And our body's natural way to cope with these things is through symptoms. You're eating the wrong foods, our body will produce some sort of a symptom. So when you go ahead and now you block that symptom, you're now preventing your body from extracting toxins, from coping and cleansing the body from these carcinogenic or terrible foods, drinks, items that we've ingested into our body. We're stopping that from happening, now allowing these to affect our body in a negative light. Correct. Uh, we were given free choice for a reason. We don't 
choose to exercise our free choice because we're being brainwashed by what we see in the people around us. In my clinic, I don't have magazines out in the, in the, in the conversation area where patients are, are then waiting to come in because every magazine is filled with one drug ad after another. They're insidious. They're everywhere. Not that life-saving drugs are out of the question. In a case of an emergency, I'm all for it. But for the most part, on chronic problems, that is not the answer. And we have it rampant here in our society, and people are suffering and they're dying for it. We need to empower them to make the right choices. Pick up the apple instead of the Snickers bar. Right. Get out on the, just take a walk instead of sit and watch the pro TV program. And here they are in, in all the magazines, every other page is a, as an ad. But what they don't see, what most people don't see is the back page, the page behind the ad, which is a, an entire page of side effects, effects that are worse mo in many cases than the actual condition that the person has. So in, in our office, we make sure that when they come in there, they're going to see the back page. They're going to read the back page. Side effects, by the way, is a misnomer. I don't teach that in my office. I don't teach that when I talk to anyone, even when I talk to medical doctors. It's a direct effect. It's not a side effect. You take this drug, this is what this effect. Just because you're not expressing it, it still doesn't mean that that's not directly caused from the medication that you're taking. It's not a side effect. That's a euphemism to kind of put it off to the side, like, oh, it's, a, on the side. it's a direct effect. There, are, there is not one drug that does not have a side effect. You know, I have people, oh, well, it's over the counter. Aspirin, the most ubiquitous drug out there. People say, ah, it's been around so long. It's been over the counter so long. It can't be that. Do you know that one single aspirin wipes out your platelets for an entire week? Your platelets, it's a clotting thing. The stomach and the intestinal lining bleeds about a teaspoon of blood with one. One aspirin. This is not benign. And that's the most benign over the counter that's out there compared to prescription drugs. We have to do something. We have to make a revolutionary change in the way we think. And it comes down to what we're doing by empowering the patients. Correct. So I really want to thank you for joining us, Doc. And we're just out, about, out of time here. So love you to join us next time on Ask the Chiropractor. Remember that God gave us the gift of life, and what we do with that gift is our gift back to God. We'll see you next time. <laughs>